Hello, my name is Neil George, and you are joining me with Tom Sosnoff of, of Tasty Trade. We are live at the Money Show in Dallas, Texas, and also broadcasting on Facebook Live. So Tom, what, you know, you've been you know, serving the individual investor for some time now. You had the Thinkorswim platform, you know, which provided a lot of easy, easy access to individual investors. Yep. And now you have Tasty, uh, Tasty Trade as being uh -huh. something that really is trying to address some of the needs of the individual investor. Sure. One of the big challenges that I see out there is that most of, of the Wall Street and most of the brokerage firms seem to want to take advantage of an individual investor by shoveling them into a lot of sort of passive products instead of basically working with them to get them you know, sort of access to some of the, you know, the, the better direct ways. How is Tasty Trade working to empower the individual investor? Well, so it's a great question because um, if you come to my discussion tonight, you'll hear everything that's, uh, I don't believe wealth is created through passive investing. I believe wealth is created through active investing and contrary to what kind of is very popular. Um, you know, what's, what's interesting about what we do is we're a strong advocate for individual investors and we're a strong advocate for active, active participation in the markets. We believe that, you know, we believe that nobody kind of encourages people to be passive about anything. Just think about it. I mean, you don't say go out and build your own business and let's be passive. You don't say, you know, right. I can't we're wait. For we, want, we want people to be engaged of in course. what they're doing, of be course. passionate about what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, of course. And, and in order to do that, um, you know, you need to participate. I, I believe the, the strongest argument you can make for individual investors to, to engage in trading, engage in, you know, and act, active markets is there is something learned about decision making and something learned about risk taking that is invaluable to whatever you decide you're going to do in your life. And most people don't actually have any of that kind of that challenge. We call it an intellectual challenge, but most people don't get to experience that challenge at any point in their career until they're much older. And so for us, one of the real takeaways from from active trading and one of the things that most firms miss when it comes to you know the type of products they push and the type of ideas they try to deliver is they don't really understand the customer's ability to assess risk and the individual's ability to assess risk and the value of decision making and all that comes from playing in a very efficient marketplace which is why we love active trading one of the things I get that a lot of firms do is they want to be very restrictive to what an individual investor sure. can do with it. Of course. Particularly when looking at some of the retirement accounts. Of course. To be able to use options to be able to you know, put trades on. Yep. Yet, at the same time, you seem to allow and embrace some of the, some of these additional strategies that other brokerage firms might basically say is, deem it as too risky. Right. Well, it's it's absolutely ridiculous to think that to think that there's a relationship between risk and complexity, and so we look at the marketplace and say, you know what, for a lot of people, the, the capital they have, the wealth they've created may be in something that has, you know, what they call limited margin access or a retirement account. And so what we've done over the years is we've actually, we're the first brokerage firm to open up um, trading in retirement accounts for all kinds of option spreads, uh, futures, and most recently, in fact, in 2018, we just introduced naked calls. We've always had naked puts in an IRA account. Right. We've just introduced naked calls in an IRA account, which we're the first firm and actually only firm to allow you to do that right now. Um, we believe you should never limit anybody. There's, there, you should never limit anybody by the amount of money they have, and you should never limit anybody to the type of strategy they can apply. I mean, imagine somebody going to a casino and you tell them, hey, you know what, Neil, all you can do is play blackjack. I mean, that's, that makes no sense. So it's your money, do whatever you want with it. Now, you know, along that same line, you've seen a lot of the, the Wall Street firm, and the market in general really has been, as we said earlier, has been trying to sort of drive the individual investors away from you know, the actual market. Of course. Place. And at the same time, the overall market itself for stocks keeps shrinking. You know, we're yep. about half the number of stocks we were back, you know, sure. back in the 90s. Do you see this trend continuing as far as you know, the, you know, the public market kind of you know, being compressed in number and the private market basically for the larger institutional investors getting larger? So it's a very fair question. I, I see, I believe that the current passive market environment, which is you know, 99 or 99 and a half percent of the marketplace is passive. I see that a dramatic shift over the next decade. And the reason for the dramatic shift is you're gonna see the returns are going to go away. At some point, you're not going to be in a 10-year bull market. And at some point, there's going to be a massive flow of capital out of passive into active because people aren't going to sit back and just say, hey, you know what, just take my money. So 
For starters, I think the marketplace and the cyclicality of the marketplace will dictate a, um, a, a reversal of the current trend towards passive investing and everything will move towards active. The other problem with active is, and the, one of the reasons we're one of the few players that support active trading is because we have the know-how, the understanding, and we build the technology to support it. When you talk about most of the big firms, the CEOs, the management teams, they don't support it because they don't understand it. You know, you're not gonna go out and say, wow, you know, I mean, the only reason they wanna do active trading is because we take market share from them. And then they're like, oh man, we should do active trading. But they don't even know what that means. So, you know, it's important for um, individual investors to support firms that support you. Now, as I mentioned, you know, the, the number of publicly listed shares is down yeah. in the U.S. marketplace. At the same time, thanks to the Jobs Act, we've had the crowdfunding market and the crowd platforms that have been, have been providing opportunities for accredited and non-accredited investors. Yeah. Do you see this you know, as a legitimate way for individual investors to be there, or do you really no. want to direct people into the public market space? So the, the, the private or crowdsourced marketplace is not accessible to individual investors at this time. I mean, I wish it was, and I love the concept of crowdfunding, but unfortunately the laws are so restrictive right now and the investments are so small the, the, that it's not really there. There's nothing there. I think that when you, when you talk about accredited investing, that's a whole different story, and that really is limiting. You know, accredited investors are super limited. So currently, um, the, uh, the whole crowdsourcing, all the, all the regulatory changes towards crowdsourcing, they've scratched the surface but they haven't gone far enough. With respect to the contraction of individual stocks that are out there, you know, listen, it's a function of the way good firms raise money and it's a function of just a lot of the regulatory burden on on firms that are, you know, that are private, that are successful. There is, it's a lot easier to value yourself with private equity investments than it is to value yourself in a free and efficient market. Now that said, um, what you're seeing right now with the contraction in number of underlings, we've gone from like, 6,800 or something, 7,000 down to just under 4,000 tradable underlines. But 3,000 of those underlines weren't tradable anyway. They, they weren't liquid. What you have now is incredibly liquid markets and the top 150, 200 um, underlines that, that do about 95% of the business actually are more liquid now than they've ever been. So the individual investor has more opportunity now than they ever have before. And I think it's actually a good thing. We've gotten rid of, we, we've, we've been able to convince individual investors that liquidity is king, and there's so much liquidity now around the biggest names that you would be crazy as a self-directed individual investor to get into an illiquid marketplace, such as crowdfunding, such as you know venture or private equity. It's just not worth it. You can't get out. And so that you have a liquidity, you actually be able to get in and out That's of a right. good company. And there's still thousands of companies that are out there that are presenting opportunities. There, there are thousands of companies, but, but, but when it gets down to it and you're trading, you know, when you talk about the most liquid commodities, the most liquid stocks, the most liquid indexes, it's, it's, there's between 150 and 200 different tradable instruments that have, that have either futures, underlying stocks, and a liquid option marketplace. That's what you need in order to be strategic. And that's plenty for all the investors that are out there. For all the participants, that's absolutely plenty. Okay, so you know, Tom, thanks very much for, you know, for sharing your thoughts. I wish you well with your, your latest venture. And again, I'm all in favor of empowering the individual investor. We all are, that's why we're here. Thank you so much. So thanks for joining me. We are live at the Money Show in Dallas, Texas, and also on Facebook. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Neil George.